I often get asked, how is it I managed to spend £100,000 renovating a HMO? Today, we are at one of our HMO refurbishment projects and I wanna show you exactly how I do that. watching my videos for the first time my name is Saj Hussain and on this channel I share with you my 15 years of property investing experience to ultimately help you get further faster in your property investing journey. HMOs is a very competitive business it's very different to how it was about 10 years ago when I first started the type of rooms that the houses we created then are so different to what we're doing right now if you've seen any of the other videos of our completed project you'll know the type of finish that I like to create. So the property that we're at today is one we acquired a little while ago and we managed to acquire it no money down. And if you want to learn more about that, we'll link up the video in the description so you can go and watch that again after this, uh, this video. But with this particular property, what we're doing now, we're spending 100,000 or thereabouts, probably and a little bit more, to renovate it, to make it much nicer, much more modern, much more appealing to today's market. Let's go on through and let me show you some of the progress since we were last here. <laughs> Welcome to Open Plan Living. Well, a little bit of exaggeration. This one's got no roof on it right now because we've stripped it off, but it gives you an idea of what we do when we work on these HMOs. Essentially, over the years, we've worked out what we think is the ideal layout for these type of houses. The problem is, although they've been built in the right type of size for us, the configuration doesn't work. So what we try and do is strip everything back to the bare walls, as you can see right now, and sometimes stripping the roof off as well. So pretty much we're starting with a shell, a skeleton, just the four walls almost, and creating the layout that we want. Often it's moving doors and windows around as well. So the configuration, the flow works. Ultimately, what we want to do is try and create a desirable room in that house that's going to be spacious it's going to work well in terms of layout the bed's going to be a good size there's going to be some desk space to work on there's going to be good storage space for clothes as well and a reasonable amount of space within the room as well to try and create all that within the limited confinements of what we've got of a room is what we really work towards now some of the rooms are much much bigger they're much more spacious and some of the rooms are much more small as well so this one's at the back of the house that we're at now this will be like dining space or games room uh, in the house an additional space and we were in the last video if you haven't already seen that again we'll link that up for you up here so you can watch that after this video where, where i was questioning what we'll do with this roof we weren't quite sure and ultimately we're at that point now where we've stripped it off and we're going to put a new roof on we'll have to wait till the next video to see exactly what style of roof that we're going to put on here <laughs> We spend a huge amount of time designing the layer on paper and also on computer using CAD software before we actually start working on site. And that way we're very clear exactly where everything's gonna go, pretty much right down to exactly where every socket's gonna go to that level of detail. And that's only come from experience of doing so many of these houses, but realizing actually the more planning we do, the easier the projects become. And of course, having teams that have done this many times for us as well, makes it so much easier as well. But that doesn't really reduce the cost because there's so much work that we're doing. Once we've gutted the property and stripped it all back to its bare brick, then we start reconfiguring it in terms of how we want it to look. So for example, it might be doors and windows that might be moved, might be partitions. So this space here now that we're in, this is the kitchen space. And this partition here is a little bit of space we've nicked from this kitchen to create an ensuite for the room behind it because that room was, uh, it's a reasonable size room, but we wanted to try and create a bit more space. So we've used some space here to be able to get that ensuite in. And because we've got the space behind us as well that we were just in, which is communal space, it's still gonna be a reasonable amount of space. And because this is a four story building, there's a basement as well. It means that we're gonna utilize the basement and in the basement we'll have the plant room. So we'll have the, uh, the tanks, the boiler, and also the utility space will be down there as well. So the tumble drives, washing machine, all that will be down there. Uh, as well so it's really by utilizing this space planning it out in advance it means there's there's still quite a lot of work to do and hence why we end up spending so much money doing these properties but right now we're at the stage where all the plumbing's gone in and the electrics uh, have gone in and we've boarded out uh, partitioned out the uh, structures the en suites the various layouts that we need to do most of the new windows are in and now we're at the point where they're ready to start skimming <music> So the last time we were here, which was just a few weeks ago, we're upstairs now on the, uh, on the first floor at the front of the house. And the thing with this is, looking at this room, it hasn't really changed a great deal. 
And that's because this particular build team that's on here is actually running two projects at the same time. Another one just literally down the road from here, not very far from here. So they're managing the two projects. Right now, the top floor, the attic and this uh, floor here, they're pretty much ready to start skimming. So in a few days time, the team will come on, they'll start doing the skimming work here. And whilst they're doing that, the original build team that was here, they're working on another project, which we'll maybe do next week sometime. We'll pop over to that and have a look and I'll show you that one. Uh, as well. So as you see here, there's, there isn't a huge amount of change, but it's already, this is a, the largest room. Uh, this room and the attic room tend to be my favorite because they're a nice size, they're really good size rooms, and also the ones that tend to get a premium in terms of rent. Now those rooms that aren't really as big as this, because you know, it'd be nice if they're all this size, but those that aren't as big as this, you've got to make sure that they really stand out so they appeal and they're still let and there's still a healthy demand for those rooms. Otherwise the big rooms get let, and nobody wants to take the smaller rooms. So to avoid that, we try and make sure that all the rooms have some features, something about them that's really appealing, a little bit of a wow factor in them. And this is how we end up spending so much money. And when we're finishing the uh, properties off as well, they're done to a good standard, good quality materials are used, and the fitting and fixtures, even like TVs in the rooms, all of these things are done, and it's pretty much like a, a hotel standard quality of house for them. Hey. Can you do me a favor whilst you're here, if you're enjoying this content, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. That way it really helps me to get this message out to more people because I do this free content for you and I'd like to help reach as many people as I possibly can to help them get further faster in their own property investing journey. So do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We're now in the top floor in the attic room and here sometimes these rooms can be a little bit of a challenge in HMOs because they're a little bit weird in terms of size and layout and configuration which just means getting furniture in and where you gotta put the bed it doesn't always work so well. So it's thinking through how can we make this as desirable as possible and one of the things that I think really helps in these kind of rooms is as much light as you possibly can. So we've just uh, a few days ago fitted the new Velux windows in. We've got one here, one behind you over there and one in the bathroom over there. So three Velux windows have gone in here plus we've got the original window at the dormer at the front here as well. So now there's plenty of light coming in in this property. Even today is like a, it's like a mild day but there's still lots of light in here and I think the lighting and uh, the feeling of uh, spacious and airy uh, room really helps in terms of when we're trying to sell that room and pitch that room as well. Also creating luxury ensuite rooms really helps in making it another desirable space. So here where we've got enough space to be able to create a good size ensuite room means we can create that luxurious feel to the bathroom. And of course, when people are uh, staying in a room and they've got a nice bathroom to themselves and it's a nice luxury filter bathroom, good quality furniture, nice airy room like this. Again, this is one of the rooms that I expect will sell and rent very quickly. I say sell because essentially that's what we're doing. We're selling, we're selling the vision for somebody to be able to live here for them and use this as their home. And ideally, although uh, HMO tenants tend to be more transient, we want them to stay as long as we possibly can. We want them to be happy here. We want them to pay a good rent and uh, enjoy the space and not be moving anytime sooner. And that's really what we're trying to create. So spending a hundred grand to create that is not difficult to do. We're trying to blow it quite easily. But the key thing is what we're able to do is create a massive uplifting value of the property. So typically if we're buying something at say 250,000 pound, we're spending about 100,000 pound renovating it. We've got to spend about 350. Our end values are going to be probably 450 to 500. And if you want to understand and learn more about HMO valuations and how they work, I'll make sure I link up a video up here for you that I've done that explains the numbers and exactly how they work. If you'd like to see more videos like this, do let me know in the comment section below. If there's particular questions you've got about these properties, these buildings, these renovations we're doing, again, pop in the comment section below. I do my very best to answer all those questions myself within the comment section. And you know, if you want to learn more about these type of properties, you need to let me know what type of videos you wanna see. I'm creating the videos that I think that you want, that I think you'll enjoy. You need to let me know if there's something different you want, so I'm creating those videos that you like. So what I've got lined up next for you to watch is a great video over here, but before you do that, make sure you click on my face down here to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you over here on the next video.